I'd like to welcome everyone that's here gathered in person, but also everyone who's joining us online. This year, the conference has been held in Motherwell in the outskirts of Glasgow in Scotland. Uh, and our first Health and Truth conference was instigated essentially as an emergency summit in November 2021 by a group of concerned Christians who had watched with deep concern the implementation of increasingly restrictive mandates in an attempt to control a virus that wasn't even considered a high-consequence infectious disease. Measures that did not have the support of decades of scientific research and knowledge, all, the supposed, all in the supposed interest of public health. Established pandemic protocol predicted such measures would be futile and would in fact cause far-reaching and long-lasting harm. These measures and the inevitable consequences from them denied many commands and principles clearly taught in God's word. How could Christians who believe that God cares about both the spiritual and physical health of people remain silent as healthy people were prevented from gathering as a church? How could we remain ambivalent to the reality of the elderly being shipped out of hospital never to receive any further medical treatment and their death knowingly accelerated medically? And then in the autumn of 2021 came the prospect of vaccine mandates, which would make vaccination necessary to participate in everyday life, including attendance at a place of worship, and in some cases to retain one's employment. Let's remember that the pharmaceutical companies had indemnity from any harms caused by the vaccine. A vaccine, it was falsely claimed, would stop transmission, but didn't and which only had a limited or even questionable benefit without any long-term safety data and which was already indicating short-term the highest risk-to-benefit ratio of any vaccine in recent history. And in response to the prospect of vaccine mandates and passports, the Health and Truth uh, organization examined the novel vaccines and the mandated use of them scientifically, ethically, and biblically in our first conference. Today, we want to examine the role played by the media in these events. Many people have sighed a sigh of relief, and they've hoped, I guess, that it's gone away. But the underlying issues that led to what happened last year and what was about to happen last year haven't gone away. We've observed since March 2020 the cancellation and demonizing of scientists and medical practitioners who dissented from the government narrative while any members of the public who disagreed with the science trademark, the narrative trademark, were ridiculed and silenced by the experts on our airwaves. Neil Oliver recently described the aggressive push for everybody to take the vaccine facilitated by the media. And he, he says this, that which might have been advice became coercive instruction backed up by real, slanderous, aggressive, vitriolic, shaming rhetoric. Waiting and seeing was quickly taken away as an option, and we were informed that if we didn't toe the line, there would be consequences to bring us into line. How does the media work today? Does it operate under the same principles that it had decades ago? Are the mainstream media objective and transparent in their search for the truth, or are they simply a mouthpiece for the government or other bodies who fund them? These are important questions. The Christian church in many quarters simply adopted the media stance, often under the guise of love thy neighbor, and followed the relentless propaganda to tyrannize the conscience of believers. I myself was refused entry into a church because of my vaccination status. Are Orthodox believers free to dissent from the mainstream narrative and definitive political viewpoints? Or are they simply bound to the consensus agreed by a church leadership? These also are pertinent questions with biblical answers. And so, as we start our conference today, and we'll, in a moment we will be listening to um, our first speaker, John William Noble. He will be bringing us a biblical response to media manipulation and control. He is a pastor in, a, in Grace 
uh, Baptist Church in Aberdeen. He was involved with our first conference and undertook the task then of biblically examining the role of the church and state and how the church should respond biblically to vaccine mandates. And we're very thankful again, John William, for having you today to bring us the word of God. But before I do that, I just want to read a couple portions of scriptures and commence with a short word of prayer. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23 tells us this. It says, buy the truth and do not sell it. I think that speaks for itself. Read also in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, these words where the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy. And he says to him, you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And we are reminded from the word of God that God is the source of truth. It's the source of truth that has led many of us here today to confessing the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And we are called as Christians to love our neighbor by opposing the lies that have taken our neighbor captive. Let me just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear God and Father, we thank you that you are the source of all truth. We thank you, dear Father, that we do not need to grapple around in the darkness because you have sent your light into the darkness. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you that when the Lord Jesus Christ becomes the master of our conscience, that our conscience is free. And we thank you, dear Father, That as Christians, you have called us to pursue truth in all areas of our lives. And we pray that we would do so. And so we commit this conference to you today. We pray that you might bless it. And that might honor you. And that, Lord, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. Amen.